Over the past several years, AGI has had the opportunity to work on several different research initiatives. But one thing that we always continue to focus on is trying to make the weekly genetic evaluation for the American Angus Association better for the users of Angus genetics. One way that we can continue to make it better is just by capturing a sheer massive quantity of data. Another thing we have to take into consideration is the quality of that data as it comes into the genetic evaluation and the connectedness of that data across many different contemporary groups. Earlier this year, we were approached by Angus Australia for a research project to understand how connected our pedigrees were across the pond. After several months of research, the American Angus Association Board of Directors voted to have the first ever joint foot score run with the Australian Angus Association, the American Angus Association, as well as the Canadian Angus Association. While American Angus Association members have been diligent about collecting these new phenotypes, and we nearly have 47,000 records already included into the weekly genetic evaluation, we were thrilled to see the opportunity that the 62,000 foot score phenotypes that the Australian Angus Association has collected could benefit our own. The reason that we were able to combine these two databases is because the scoring systems between the American Angus Association and Australian Angus Association are very similar. Actually, the foot score EPD system that we use here in the States was modeled off of the Australian scoring system in 2015. Before we could utilize these Australian phenotypes in the American Angus Association weekly genetic evaluation, we had to understand how connected these two databases were. In doing so, we found that 20% of the progeny that had a foot score phenotype collected in Australia were sired by an American Angus Association registered bull. With that, another 33% of these progeny had a American Angus Association grandsire in their pedigree. In addition to the connectedness among these two data sets, nearly 35 American Angus Association sires who didn't have any progeny born between 1988 and 2014 had a minimum of 25 progeny records collected in the Australian database. This adds a lot of value to our weekly genetic evaluation here in the States as we're able to capture those phenotypes on bulls where we didn't have the opportunity to capture them since we just started collecting foot scores in 2015. Although these additional phenotypes are very valuable to the weekly genetic evaluation, anytime we add data, there's gonna be a sheer amount of change. When we add these foot score phenotypes, these 62,000 records from Angus Australia, our correlations among our EPDs from week to week do change. With the addition of the Australian foot score phenotypes, our correlations are between 0.88 for foot angle and 0.87 for claw set. While that's a very high positive correlation, there will be changes as a result of these additional phenotypes working their way into the genetic evaluation. With that, when we take a look at our current sires, which are sires that are currently registering within our herd book, the largest claw set and foot angle changers are around 0.25 in either direction. This will have a subsequent change on our maternal weaned calf values as our foot score EPDs are included in that maternal weaned calf value index. Largest changes for our maternal weaned calf value index are around $18, and a subsequent $18 change will be seen in our combined value as well as the dollar $M index is included in that calculation. Moving forward, using all three of these databases combined, will have a value to you as a breeder as we can better characterize both foot angle and claw set in our American Inks Association weekly genetic evaluation. This will undoubtedly increase the accuracy of these predictions, which will allow you as an Angus breeder to make more solid decisions when we're talking about foot confirmation.